Welcome to the Windy Hill Windsock with me, The Solution, and joining me today is The Architect. Solution, how are you going? I'm all right, mate. How are you? I cannot complain. It was a good weekend. Good to hear. Good to hear. With us is Jez. Solution, Welcome. how are you? Good. I'm well, my friend. How are you? But it feels like um, I haven't been on for a couple of weeks. Is HR, like, is that still kicking around, that issue? No, your I think your file is closed for the moment, but um, right. you still only come on based on performance. So, yep. you know, make of that what you will. Uh, now, you went to the game, Architect. I did. And, Jez, you, like me, like we really, if you don't go to AFL games, you really do pay a penalty, and that is you have to listen to some insufferable commentators. And I want to start with this, so I don't forget it, Dwayne Russell. Now, I think I said last week that um, Cameron Ling had gone to, to the front and, and was leading leading the pack in terms of worst commentator. It's like Mario Kart, I reckon. Um, Dwayne Russell was like Bowser. He's come up on the inside, and he might just go on and win the lap. Uh, shocking today. Shocking today. What do you reckon, Jez? Am I being unfair? Um, he, he's got a lot of his own mannerisms, hasn't he? Like like Bruce McAvaney used to have a lot of his own mac- ma- uh, mannerisms that just keep getting keep getting a go. Look, I, I don't mind the old pipe. Um, the, the one I didn't really notice him until he called. He told he made that mistake and went on and on about um, Jai Menzi. But it was actually Sam Durham who was on the screen. Uh, other than that, I found him pretty inoffensive. No, well, not only l- let me just say he's an irritating commentator, but he, it's the errors he makes, um, and that one was a classic. So not only only did he call Durham Menzies, or is it Menzies Durham, whichever, twice, which also shows how disliked he is. Like his producer in his ear just let him let him double down and didn't say anything, and then Jordan Lewis told him no. But the favourite comment that he made that I wrote down is he called the game, he called the Eston win a handy win. <laughs> Somebody explain to me what was handy about that win. Anybody? One step closer to the ninth spot. <laughs> that could be it. Well, it was- it was handy for Adelaide, who had an unexpected win, and our win keeps Adelaide's draft picks pretty much preserved. It was handy for Adelaide. Yeah. We, we've spoken about this before, but um, as much as I'd love to say, yes, I want us to lose and, and dra- our draft pick's more important, when I'm watching the game, I definitely want us to win. That said, I guess the danger is Hawthorne and... It is only three percentage points difference, 2.8 actually. So I must admit, I didn't mind some of the junk time kangaroos goals at the end. Can't win by too much, right? Got to, we'll go, you know, the AFL have clearly said, look, at least make them look competitive. So be it, they get two or three easy ones right at the death. Yeah, anyway, um, turning to the game, uh, we expected to win, we expected to win comfortably we did both of those things do we want to spend a lot of time on the game it was fairly i don't know it was fairly ho-hum i would have thought i don't think you can read too much into practice match form i mean basically you know pre-season games are you don't you can't read too much into them i just think you know there were no major injuries and i think that's probably about right when does the season start oh so what you're saying is because we last yeah, we were the earliest back from pre-season. Have we, are we back even earlier? Have we started pre-season? Is that what you're telling me? I don't know. Just the game just had that feel of, of it being sort of slightly um, like they were going to put on bibs and change teams halfway through or something. There was just some something practice matchy about it from the couch anyway. What about Architect? You were at the game. How did it? What was it like at the game? Uh, I was... Um... It wasn't too bad. It was a very one-sided crowd. So um, I think the two North supporters turned up, so that was good for them. But 
I will say it was a bit meh. I could, you know, take it or leave it type of thing. There wasn't anything really special about it. It felt like it was basically done as soon as the, after the first bounce. Well, I think in that case, I'm going to give you, Jez, the honour, the dishonour of the awards. Give me some best players. And uh, I suspect your yeah, Henneman might be a bit harder this week than it has been in recent weeks. I don't yeah. think yeah, uh, yeah. It um, well, I'll start with the good ones. I, I think I don't know if this ended up being the case, but there was certainly for a long bit of the game, North had more inside fifties mm. than us. So, so our backline saw a lot of action, and and I thought our backline stood up stood up very well. And I want to give a shout out to uh, my boy Zerky, who I think did a fantastic job on on Nick Larkey, um, and Hindy as well. I thought was was awesome. Um, got to probably give a, a nod to the package because he did kick five. And I, did, I thought he had a shit game last week and he really turned it around this week. I think. Yeah, t- a, a touch of flat track bully about it, wasn't it? Which I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, but he, he did kick his... I think he kicked three when the game was there to be won early. Sure, true. Um, did he kick the first three? I feel like he, it was like near the end of the first quarter, he was the only person to score for us. Uh, I'll tell you. Let me go to the wonderful timeline. Um, goal, Jake Stringer. Next goal was Bailey Scott. Then goal, Stringer. Goal, Stringer. He hit three goals, one. Mm. He had three goals, one by the 20th minute of the first quarter. Sorry, he was on Fred Fanning um, uh, trajectory at one point. Yeah, he 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 he, he was much better than last week. Uh, I think most people at the end of the game might have given the award to Zach Merritt. I, I thought he was pretty bloody good. He had a lot of score involvements, um, a hell of a lot of possession. But if it were up to me and only up to me, I'd give it to Red Dog. I think that when the game was there to be won, he was like a standout. Uh, he tapered a little as the game went on, but I think when when it, when the heat was on, I think he was he was absolutely stellar. And the guy was what was he vomiting blood or something only a week ago? So yep. fantastic effort. I, I would have given it to him. I reckon that's a really good call out. He got 32 touches and he ran at something like 96% efficiency with the ball. It's phenomenal. Yeah, I mean, I think those two were the, the standouts. Um, I thought Kyle Lang- Langford did show again what we've been missing uh, earlier in the season because he does he gets those goals as well, um, which is always handy. But uh, I don't know. Can we just on merit? Why was he so poor at the start of the year? Was he unfit, or was it was it something above the shoulders, or was it something to do with the team or the team structure? Or was it the game plan, or, or trying to implement it? His slight different role, and I don't know, it didn't click. What was his role? Well, you would have thought it would have been like a, a I don't know, probably trying to make him more an offensive mid. But when, when you're butchering the ball, moving it forward and but he's not doing that either. He's he's yeah. hitting targets, and is it is it Parish not being there that's allowing him to kind of absolutely be the number one man? Jez, you're sitting there stony face like an Easter Island statue. I, I presume you're in deep thought. No, I'm just thinking about uh, the Henneman actually. But uh, Zaki, look, he was there was some very damning vision of him earlier in the year, not really chasing with intent and. Um, look, who, who who knows? I think he's he's just spot on at the moment. Players have ups, they have downs, and he's he's on at the moment. Um, not just in his in his disposal, but in his in the defensive side of of his game. He laid some cracking tackles today. Um, ran hard both ways. Uh, he would have been a deserving herd winner. Um, but I, I just well, think Red Dog was the say, one. Jess, what would he have had to have done to actually get it? 
kick that kick the goal after the siren from 80 out is that would that would have been the difference yeah i was disappointed with that talk but no look it was just when the game was hot i th- i just think red dog was everywhere and uh uh, I think Bezerit got most of his in the second half when the game was sort of done. That's all. Well, I wish Fiona was here because she would just call you out, Jez, on that just complete ignoring of the question and refusing to delve uh, <laughs> into what I asked. But that's okay. We know that's your MO. Anything else on the game? Um, oh, no, no. Henneman. You've got to give the Henneman. Can I, can I ask this question, Jez? Yeah. Is Will Snelling off the hook this week? Um, or is he still in the net? He, he he might get a mention, but I don't think he was as bad as, as Archie. I mean, Archie wasn't bad. He was just rusty. Mm. He clearly needed the run. Uh, probably should have been in the VFL, except for the injury to Shields. So for me, um, there, was no, there was no one who was hopeless. There was no one who was super frustrating. Uh, but Archie just uh, was a step behind all day so for me that's who i'd suggest but did you guys um have any other names yourselves well i was, I was going to say that it wasn't a bad game but i thought sam draper was beaten in the middle today but the yeah um just but even i don't know if it was just more around the, the setup around the clearances but the kangaroos towed us up all day the, the clearances were abysmal we got yeah. absolutely rolled by we got monstered but I'm not sure that was a Draper problem. Um, but, yeah, we got absolutely smashed. He also didn't have his big red-headed foil there either, Draper. No. So I just wonder whether... And it's getting late in the season. He's still, like, in terms of games that he's played, he's probably tank will get better um, over the course of the next year or so. So maybe he's... Just not quite ready to run out of game as the number one ruckman for most of the game. Because yep. who gave who gave him a chop out? There was a bit of um, a bit of two meter, and that was about it. Yes. Mm. Can I can I chime in and say I went to I actually did, went to the VFL game today, not the Marvel game. And Nick Bryan, who was teetering on the edge of selection this week in the ones, he was amazing today. It was the best game I've seen him play. Gee, I hope we don't lose him. I know we've just signed Phillips for another year or two or whatever it is, um, but Nick Bryan had a fantastic game today, and he, he he just got to be knocking on the door of a game somehow. Um, well, all the more reason to play him if if, if we're a chance to lose him and, and say to him, "We have faith in you, and we we believe in you," and give him some game time. He was stellar today. Um, I I went out there to see Hurls. He, he didn't, you know, bless his heart, do do a heap, but. Um, it was great to see him there. I think he started a melee at quarter time, which was fantastic. <laughs> Saw that. Saw that. <laughs> but, yeah, so that was – anyway, does anyone have any other suggestions other than Archie, or is it – or Draper, I know you had a Draper. I just don't, don't reckon he was as ineffective as Archie. Mm-hmm. No, nah, I, I think Harry, again, struggled to impose himself, but then he kicks the two goals. I was very pleased to see him. Um, kicked that goal from 45 metres on a bit of an angle. It was a pretty good shot for goal, actually. But, again, contrasting him with Joe Danaher, he's a guy who just works at it and, and, and continues to get better and will get better. But, no, there was, I, don't, I, th- I think that's fair enough. I'd, I'd, and, I'd, I'd agree with you. I think he, he was rusty. And it's a small H. Henneman, too, isn't it? Because he's been injured. So he kind of... Sometimes you've got to take one for the team. Sorry, Archie. Yeah, it wasn't a, it wasn't a, it wasn't a sort of uh, Braden Ham style Henneman. No, or a Snelling at his worst style Henneman. It was we've got to give it to someone, and he was just a bit rusty. Yeah, he wasn't minus three meters gain, for example. <laughs> um, I've got a question that I was thinking about through the game when um, Stewart kicked his third goal. Is he the, just the biggest tease, or is he? Does he have a career? Is he even? Is this his last year, by the way, or has he got another, another to go? Don't know. I just, I just yeah. don't know whether, whether he's. I don't know how many games he's played. He's probably played fifty by now. Does he have a place on this list or not? 
Because he looked good at times against a very poor team. For me, it'll always be how he goes against the uh, the better opposition and the better backman. So I think you're right. He did look he did look good today. Um, but it's the question mark of well, what happens when he comes up uh, against a good defensive unit. Yes, He's always been okay as the sort of second, maybe third or fourth um, best forward. But when he gets found out is when we have some injuries and he's got to take the best defender. Uh, and he finds himself up against the best defender. I think he gets a bit caught out. Agree. And I just, whatever you do, just don't play him back. Unless you want the ball escorted across the line. <laughs> you still got PTSD from that. Um, uh, any other talking points from the game? Jez, do your stats say anything of interest? No, nothing of interest. But I, I, um, we, it's probably worth shouting out Jai Menzi, who got his first um, run. And I, I don't know when he came on. It was it was it after half time. Um, it was interesting listening to the commentary because they pointed out a couple of times that he really ran to dangerous places and and knew where to be when the ball was coming into the forward line and um uh i know there's a regular contributor to this podcast who's bemoaned the absence of a small forward a small crafty (laughs) forward and i hope she was watching uh closely um and i reckon she might have given him half a twix just for that little effort, just he, he was running in the right places and uh, looked dangerous. He's clean. He, we ran at 100% in, in your first game. You can't ask more than that. And who did he hit on the chest? Just a, a razor. Stewie. Um, it was yeah, it Stewart. was Stewie, wasn't it? Um, streaming into the forward line. It was like a 35-metre pass at wasn't that high off the ground, bang, right on Stewart's chest. It was a bullet. Uh, it couldn't have been better. It was. It was. Looks a bit like Wanganine too, just with a hair. And I can see both of them running around in the forward line next year, causing havoc, along with the 15 Davy Twins will draft as well. <laughs> uh, anything else? Yeah, I've got, I've got one. Um I'm interested to hear your thoughts on what it was like on the TV. But the umpiring in the first half, I was baffled around the 150-metre turnaround for the for the um, the wrestle in the back line, which led to the – they missed, kicked it out in full. Um, but for North getting a shot on goal, like, what the hell was that? Uh, and there were a couple of other ones, dodgy uh, – like, I think it was a 50, you get, like – also in the in the second, which again is just baffling as to what some of these calls were for. Well, I could take you've obviously never umpired a game of footy when you're playing when the you know, the under tens are playing and one's the team's a hundred points in front. As an umpire, you sort of bend the rules a little and you're a little lax, and you sort of give the other team a bit of a leg up just to so they don't go home in tears. But that that's got to be the explanation. There oh, were some yeah. baffling ones. There were some definitely baffling ones, and I do. I can understand a 50-metre penalty for descent, kind of. Uh, a free kick for descent? That's a slippery slope. Mm. And I don't think umpires should ever pay a free kick. And unless abuse is different. Um, and maybe I'm just splitting semantic hairs here. Mm. But I, I didn't even know you could, you could get a free kick, an actual free kick. Like... The ball was neutral, wasn't it? Wasn't, mm. wasn't it a ball? Yep. yep. Yeah. No, it was... Um, uh, what's his name? Who, who was it played against? Who was ridden into the ground? Was it against Hind? Hind, yeah. Hind, um, yeah. And he complained about it. And the umpire said, every time. Um, and took him... Uh, or, or gave the free kick. It's not one of those, you know, free kick given away, descent, 50... This was like the ball was neutral. It was about to be ball, balled up. Mm. Was, was, he, I thought he was unlucky not to get a free for having his head driven into the ground. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Exactly right. So he complained. And the umpire, what you wouldn't have heard, architect, is you, you could hear the umpire uh, obviously explaining the reason. And he was fucking condescending as well. And it, it was almost like, 
Oh, and I've made the wrong decision and made the wrong call, so I'll distract it by uh, I'll just I'll distract everyone from that fact by um, paying that free kick mm-hmm. and then giving giving Hind a lecture. It kind of encapsulated in in a moment a lot of what's wrong with umpiring at the moment, where I think the rules committee and the umpiring department and how they're interpreting rules has made it hard for umpires. I'm going to talk about Ginevan once we've finished on the on the match. By the way, I want to I want to chat about that. Um, but they've made it hard to interpret. They've made it hard to apply, and I think umpires second guess themselves as a result. And also they're maggots as well. Let's not forget. Uh, bright yellow ones. Yep. Anything else on this rather uninspiring game? 440 Sunday is still shit. Yep. There's, still, there's 29,000, almost 30,000 there, there today, so still got a reasonable turnout for such a crap time. Everyone heeded my call. You needed to, if you had young kids in particular, you needed to take them to see a win, mm. um, and that was the game to do it. Mm. It is a terrible time. It's a terrible time, and it's a terrible part of the year if you're not playing finals, let's be honest. Nothing? Anything else? Move on. All right. Nothing. I want to talk about that. (laughs) I can't remember what Fiona called him. It was something disparaging last week. Ginevan. What the hell is going on with this rule? I saw what the the, the one last week with Redmond, that was too high and he should have got a free kick. Didn't. So this reminds me a little bit of when Murali was bowling and Daryl Hare, prior to Murali bowling, had premeditated that he was going to be bowling no balls and and stood back from the, the bowler's crease mm. 10 metres away and and basically call, called Murali for a no ball for throwing. This is what this reminds me of. Isn't it a mess right now? Does anyone... Disagree? Oh, no, they've made, they've turned it. In, they've turned. They've made it. They've taken something that could have been easily just said, "Don't drop your knees," and made it made it easy. And now they've got a they've got a rule specifically for him. Is it a rule or is it? Well, it's. I think it goes back to you. This is the this is the AFL's interpretation of the rule for for this player. This is the rule. You see him bend his knees a bit. That's it. You don't pay it regardless. So why does Selwood? Get paid these free kicks, Jez, and not um, Ginnaman. Yeah, I don't. I, I, I can't. I don't. I don't understand it. I mean, it, it was, Selwood's been doing it for how how long? Fifteen years, however long. Three hundred and fifty games. Yep. And uh, this kid comes along, <laughs> and he's just being crucified. Um, anyway, there, there was one last night. Uh, Viney, who, who was it? Who was Melbourne playing? No, Friday night. Was it front of Mel- Melbourne? Free, free 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 yeah. 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 So Viney got a free kick. And you know that um, Twitter account has the ump stuffed up? You know that account? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've got problems with that account, but yes, I do know it. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think I think most of the time is more right than wrong. And the, the, on, on the Viney one, he said, no, nah, the umpire stuffed that one up. There was, there was clearly... Uh, dropping of the knees, clearly leaning into it, and then Viney put some mayo on it as well, and uh, it is it is just a mess. It's just a mess. I mean, Ginnivan's a flog, but it is a mess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you put that stake in the ground. I was going to say that. Uh, and, and, you know, it must be very, very hard for umpires because we see how quick... Um, Ginnivan's quick too, that's the thing. Mm-hmm. So they've got hardly any... Um, hardly any time to, to adjudicate. They don't have, the obviously, the luxury of, of a uh, replay. Um, but it's, not a, it's not a new problem. Selwood's been doing it for 15 years. And in last yeah. year, remember last year's final when Waitman just screwed us with his playing for free kicks? It's not a new problem. But suddenly this kid comes out and does it, does it on the big stage. Yeah. And everyone's gone into meltdown. I just don't quite get it. It's just clearly he's just very good at it. That's why. 
the, when watching him, he 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 it almost sometimes it looks like he's the one that's making the contact with the tackler, so he's moving into them to drop to get the free. Yeah. So it's, it's his first instinct is to say, I'm going to push into you and drop, and you're going to give me a free. You can see he's been doing it ever since he was in under tens. You know, it's just his yeah. thing. So what's going? Where do they go from here? What's the uh, what's the answer? Because I don't think the current the way it's working currently is working. Something needs to change. Oh, I'm sure the committee will make multiple changes to multiple rules around this over the the season break. Got to do something. Well, the, 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 the free kick, the rule is pretty simple. If you duck, duck your head, mm. then it's not a free kick. But anyway, probably done it to death. I've got a really good cult hero. Um, but before we do that, I've got a new segment I want to introduce because long-term podcast listeners will know as we get towards the end of the season, unless we're in finals, we kind of, let's be honest, like the, the game was uninspiring. This podcast so far has been uninspiring. So we need things to keep it, keep us amused. Um, this segment I'm calling Judas Watch. Yeah, can anyone guess what Judas Watch might pertain to? Oh, who's leaving the club? Mm. Who's, is it who's the next Danaher to to? Yeah, you, you've, you've, you've mentioned the, the name. Ladies? No, no, it's very specific, and it, it it feeds into the hatred that I have, not just myself, but I know Fiona is with me on this. What I've enjoyed doing in recent times is looking at. Twitter comments from Brisbane supporters about Joe Danaher. <laughs> now, Joe, does anybody know how Joe played yesterday? Anyone have a window into his um? Did he did his he game? Three out in the full and three points. No, it was a different sort of Joe game. Joe came out of the blocks, kicked three goals in the first quarter. But then, to quote, so so really, this this segment is is purely me just reading some tweets from Brisbane supporters. Are we ready for it? Go for it. So this is from Nick Jones Nine. Hey, just wondering if anyone saw Joe Danaher after quarter time. <laughs> um, Trevor said, plus having Joe Han. Joe Danaher injured after quarter time didn't help. Oh, wait, he wasn't injured. He was just shit. Daniel Joyce, who's verified, says um, Joe Danaher goes missing too much. All talk early, then did nothing. Uh, Coleman and Hip- Hipwood can hold their heads up high. Joe Danaher needs to realise, realised, Brisbane, Brisbane fans do struggle with English, I've noticed. Uh, Joe Danaher needs to realise that footy games go for four quarters, not just one. Cam Burt, Joe Danaher missing when the team counted on it is the most Joe Danaher thing possible. Doesn't want it, can't handle it, hashtag pretender. <laughs> um, Am I just amusing myself here? <laughs> or should I, should I, I go on and stop? I think, it, I think it's one thing for you to have five burner accounts Solution, read your own tweets out. Uh, these are these are verified. Andy Miles, just to prove it, at Andy Miles one nine eight zero a. Joe Danaher gone missing again when we needed him to stand up, and I'll say it again and again. Don't play a ruck as a medi fucking sub. They're pretty angry. Well, you wanted him. Um, oh, he's a different one, slightly different. Dermot calling Joe Danaher Anthony. Daisy Pierce would never make an error like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not bad. Those Brisbane fans could go back and find a few five, five, six years worth of tweets like that from from Essendon fans as well. And uh, you know, fuck him and fuck him. They've got what they've got. What we knew they were going to get. Yep, yeah, agreed. Agreed. So you. <laughs> He must have been sitting on the fence for three quarters. He's just full of promise. It is the hope that kills you, and Joe Danaher 
is the um, is the uh, gold standard for that for that saying because he does look good at times, looks great at times, but then just goes missing when it matters, and always ultimately disappoints. But anyway, between, does that make him the shit brother between him and Darcy? <laughs> yeah, it, Darcy was pretty shit. I'm sorry, but uh, anyway, that was um, that was Judas Watch new segment. Give us some feedback, people. So just, right. just a point of clarification, if I could. Judas Watch is just about Joe. Yeah, it's not about anyone yes. else. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Would you like to expand it to maybe, for example, Fantasia or? No, no, I just, um, I, I like it. I like it. I think there'll be a fair bit of material. Yeah, yeah, I, I, trust me. Um, this is just this game. Um, <laughs> when I go back and look at some of the, I had a brief scroll of some other games. There's a theme there. Absolutely. All right. We're going to move on from Judas Watch and we're going to go to the cult hero. So, are you ready? So, you know, you know the score, I kind of give you some hints on his biography, and then you, A, you need to guess who he is, and then B, adjudicate on his cult status or not. What I will say is, in terms of, this is hint number one, in terms of cult, this guy is a late, late, late bloomer. All right. So this fellow comes from the Ovens Murray Footy League where he played basically as a oversized man child until such time as he joined the Murray Bush Rangers and then was drafted in two thousand. A big hunk of a fellow. His playing weight was listed at 100 kilos, but unlike Ryan O'Connor, previous cult hero winner who was kind of as tall as he was round, this week's cult hero was six foot five. Had a six year career, but only played 58 games and kicked five goals. He had a lot of injuries. And could never quite get his um, his body right. But he did get reported. Did serve two weeks after striking Sydney's Adam Schneider during a match in 2005. I was delisted in 2006. But I might be best known for my role as the... Any guesses, by the way, before I... Give the give the hint that will kind of give it away. Nothing. Mm. Think hack, key defenders. I'm best known. In fact, I'm mentioned every single week as the juxtaposition Aaron for Hineman. the best on ground award. It is Aaron Henneman. <laughs> And I submit to to the committee, the, the cult hero committee, he's now a cult hero because he's mentioned basically every week. In fact, I, I, one of the things I love it, I love to see is when I see people tweeting who they're not, they're not tagging us, they're not tagging the windsock, they're not even talking about the windsock, and they're talking about the worst on ground and they say to somebody, oh, he's the Henneman today. That just warms my heart. That's our <laughs> legacy. The Windy Hill Windsox legacy, the Herd of the Henneman Award. That's what I'm claiming. He's become cult. But I'm happy for you to disagree. We need to get, we need to get him on the show solution and see if he agrees with that uh, assessment. I'm too scared. <laughs> <laughs> It'll beat the living suitcases out of me. Are you also claiming that he's only a cult because of the the windsock as well? Are you saying that it's it's because of because of this podcast he is a cult figure, not because of the football? Absolutely, we've kept his name alive. Is he a cult? Is that not a cult? I'm happy he he wasn't a know. cult when he he wasn't a cult when he played. I mean, he wasn't a cult when he played. But I I think 
I don't think it's pushing the envelope too far to say that he has become a small C cult. <laughs> small C cult. <laughs> like it. Like it. What do you reckon, Architect? I I think that's fair. I think he's yeah. You've turned it you've turned him into a cult hero now. Well, I tell you what, after he finished just having a look at Essendon. This would have been fun in the change rooms on a Saturday night after a win. He joined ex-teammates at Sylvan, including Gary Moorcroft, Ben Haynes and Mark Bullen. That would have been a good local footy team. Just get, I'm all right in saying Gary Moorcroft still plays. I think he. I think uh, I know he's a very active coach. Maybe he's a player coach. I don't know. He plays out north way, north um, northern suburbs way. Yeah, he was a northern league playing against, um, you know, the Harveys or Shane Harvey. I will tell you what, that that's not a bad segment. Um, failed a failed VFL or AFL players that became local footy stars. How's this for facts? Gary Moorcroft. Played 152 games for Bandura in the Northern Football League. 521 goals at an average of 3.43. That's not bad. Nothing wrong with little Gary. He was in uh, the 2000 Premiership team, wasn't he? Best team of the century or whatever. Did he play in the flag? I reckon he did. Uh, Let me have a look. I was going to talk about what a rat bag um, Lance Whitnell's brother was. He played for Mundur as well, but I thought better of it. Uh, you're right, Jess. He did. He played on the bench. All right. So next week, this is going to be a short podcast. Either that or at the, at the end, maybe I'll just read out another 30 Joe Danaher tweets. <laughs> They're still coming in. Instead of Song of the Week. Instead of Song They're of the Week, coming. maybe you should do... Maybe you could maybe you could turn them into a song. Hey, Ken Lambden, one minute ago, said Joe Danaher had a good laugh at Tarrant in quarter one when his flop won him a free. I didn't notice him at the end. Does anyone know if he was still laughing then? <laughs> They're still rolling in. They're still rolling in. Um, all right, who we got this week? Let's. Uh, massive weekend, massive weekend up at the um, showgrounds or whatever it's called. You've got the VFL team travelling up there for a game, I think, about 10.30 or 11. And then you've got the uh, ones at about 1 or 2 in the afternoon against the Giants. And that is what day? Uh, Saturday. Saturday. Saturday, yeah. Saturday at 2.10. Hmm. What do we reckon? They were... The Giants were abysmal. Abysmal. They kicked five goals, nine, 39. Sydney kicked 17 goals, 10. Mm. Is this Honestly, just a, a tank off? Mm. I think we're, we're, we're making a mad dash run for ninth spot. When was the last time we, we won up there, by the way? You mean in Sydney uh, as a general rule, or you mean at the Against showgrounds? WWS in particular, showgrounds. Yeah, I don't know. Surely we're about at, we, we must have got close to the point where anyone who's half dodgy goes off for a rest or goes off for a, some surgery or something, surely. Mm. Yeah, um, so what do we reckon? Give me a prediction. I reckon, I reckon un, really unfortunately, I think we're going to win. And I reckon we're going to win by 35 points. Uh, I, I also think we'll win. Um, I reckon by around uh, three goals. You know what? I think we can ta- we can tank better than that. I'm going to say we will lose by eight points. I think we might, to your point, Jez, I, I think there might be a couple of guys cotton wool few people that maybe pick up slight injuries. It's time to bring in a couple of players. Maybe Ham comes into play. Ham, no, Ham, no. Ham gives us a loss, surely. 
How did he go today, by the way? Poor guy. Uh, he was. He didn't impress. He kicked a. He kicked a good goal late, but um, no, it was uh, Brian. As I said, was amazing. Uh, who else? It was someone else who was. Oh, my mate, my boy Tommy Cuts was very good. But today it was. It was really blustery, windy hill day. The ball was going, moving like twenty meters in the air when some people were having a shot for goal. And I think some of our v- uh, AFL boys found it a bit tough, and uh, the, the win really came from the, the VFL listed guys, so the Brad Bernackis and the Billy Cooties and guys like that who um, uh, were at home in those sorts of conditions. Mm. I, I love Brad Bernacki. I don't know if you've ever been to a VFL game, but his nickname is Knackers, and he gets about 40 <laughs> possessions every week. Uh, it's just fantastic. He's not a listed player, though, is he? No, no. To put... To- do his teammates yell out knackers? Mm, absolutely. Wonderful. And he gets a lot of the ball, so you just it, it's like every quarter is just this sort of chorus of knackers as he's following him around the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Love it. So we reckon, okay, we're, we're going to win. So we, that will put us where on the ladder. Bit of Hawthorne play. This is important. Let me have a look. They yeah, played this. Is it this, the summer? Oh, they play the yeah. Suns. Yep. Yeah, it's going to get down to the wire. Adelaide's oh, got the Eagles, though. So Adelaide, I mean, Eagles have been okay, but Adelaide might just snag another unlikely win. Uh, push That's them right true. up into our mix. That's right. We can hope. That's true. All right. Um, well, before we go, just having a look again at the Judas Danaher um, timeline. Now... <laughs> There's actually, how good is this? There's a Twitter account. Now, it hasn't been active since 2020. It's at Danaher Sits. And the Twitter account is called Joe Danaher City Non Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and it's got, I encourage everybody to check it out. It's got a picture of, um, obviously, Joe sitting on the boundary fence against the West Coast, famously. Uh, and then it's got a picture of him sitting next to Forrest Gump, photoshopped into Forrest <laughs> Gump on the park bench. And then the person who runs the account obviously just ran out of um, ran out of steam. But Joe Danaher sitting on stuff is very good. Did you say sitting on a fence solution? Well, it's a picture of him sitting on a f- on the fence, the fence. I might need to grab that, uh, steal that as a bit of an avi change. Yeah, yeah, have a look, have a look. Joe Danaher sitting on stuff. Shout out to whichever genius um, came up with that. I've got Chris at Lion A Eron, whatever that means. Name a bigger downhill skier than Danaher. And his mate Yanni at Gay Mag Seventeen. These are all Brisbane supporters. I can't. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> it is do a we, gift. That, do we have to wrap up? We could keep going for another fifteen minutes listening to these. I'm enjoying them. It is a gift that keeps on giving. That's for sure. Um, someone's called out Danaher as needing to be fined for the flop. Oh, what a surprise! Danaher apparently flopped. Uh, was Dana her, her subbed off at quarter time? Question mark. Yeah, I could go on. Dana her overrated. That's from Ron Capel. They're not happy. Oh, well. Buyer beware. All right. Well, like Essendon, we're just sort of limping to the line at the end of this end of this uh, windsock season. Any other final thoughts? Oh, the, the, only, the only thing I can think of is uh, just going back to the cold cult hero, maybe you should just put a call out to the Windsock listeners to see if we can update the his Wikipedia page to make reference that he is a cult hero. To Aaron Henneman. Mm. Uh, not a bad idea. I suspect if he finds out who I am, he will punch a shit out of me because he probably... I wonder what he thinks, actually. <laughs> if anyone knows Aaron, let me know. We do do it out of love. And as I've always said, it's only because... The surname started with H, and obviously Heard is the goat. So if Heard was the Heard Award, it had to be the had to be the Henneman. 
But um, no, the only thing I'd, I'll say before we end is um, like and subscribe because we're only weeks away now from pulling out a competition winner out of the hat. And so if you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel, you might win the competition and that will win you a cake baked by the wonderful Kate, uh, Fiona from Something About Cake. So like and subscribe. All cookies, conditions apply. <laughs> yes, yes, if you're interstate. All right, well, on that note, thanks to all that listened. I'll resist the temptation to go back to Joe Dana tweets. <laughs> we don't want to shoot our load completely. We'll save it for next week. But uh, thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week. Go Bombers. Go Bombers.